Hello and welcome to today's Delta Credit Tip. So you want to get a mortgage or some other kind of loan, you stroll right on into your lender's office all confident with your 800 score and end up getting denied. How does this happen? But more importantly, how can you keep it from happening to you? Stay tuned, we'll tell you how on today's Delta Credit Tip. Hello and welcome back to today's Delta Credit Tip. So congratulations, you've decided to brave the whole new world of home ownership and more importantly, that process of trying to get approved, right? The first thing you may figure out is that having good credit isn't going to necessarily get you that loan you're looking for. Now, we have tried to instill in a lot of our clients at Delta Credit Restoration the difference between having good credit and being lendable. They're actually two different things. And sometimes one may help bleed, help bleed to the other, or one might help influence the other, but they are distinctively two separate things. So we've decided today to go on a field trip. And we're going to go visit a friend of ours that's going to help add a little clarity to that difference between being lendable and having good credit. So let's go hop in the hoopty and go on a field trip. So we've talked a little bit about the idea that having good credit is not the same as being lendable, right? And we've also talked about in the past the idea that your credit is not a score. Right? Your credit is a series of behaviors that lead to a score. But when you're trying to be lendable, that's a little harder to navigate, right? Because there's guidelines that are coming into play. And so you might not know exactly, well, what behaviors do I need to be cognizant of? What behaviors do I need to be having? You know, I don't know what's really going on around me because I just don't know what they want. Well, this is where simply surrounding yourself with someone who does can be a big help. You may say, well, I don't really know any lenders. Well, if you happen to be buying a home and you have a realtor, that realtor probably has a lender in mind. Uh, if you have a checking account somewhere, I'm pretty sure there's a lender, a mortgage lender at that bank. And then we do also live in the Google age. I mean, you can't just Google it and find a local lender to you. Hopefully you'll find one that understands what the guidelines really are. They've been around for a little while and have some time on their hands to talk to you about it. Well, either way, I've got those friends and we're going to go talk to one now so that we can see what we need to do to be lendable. As soon as I find a place to park. Hello and welcome back. So we're here with my friend Lisa Wheeler. How are you doing, Lisa? I'm good, Michael. Thank you. Lisa's been a lender now for 25 years and she knows a little thing or two about being lendable, right? And so she's going to help us today learn a little bit more about what we're talking about, about being lendable and having good credit. So Lisa, what do you mean I can have good credit and not be lendable? Great question, Michael. So the way I explain it is that each client is kind of like a triangle. So we have three different points to the triangle. Up top, we have the credit, and that doesn't just mean credit score, that also means credit history, because that's what we as lenders look at as being indicative of whether or not you're gonna be able to pay your loan in the future. Then down here, we have employment, and there are different aspects to that. And then on the other part of the triangle, we have the assets. So if you think about it, if any one of those points are weak, we can kind of still balance it, but if you have two points that are weak, the triangle is not going to hold and we're not right. going to be able to, to get the loan, appro uh, loan approval right now. Okay. So income, what do you mean by employment and income? What kind of um, obstacles or things that as a lender mm -hmm. you guys are looking for in the, in the employment side? Sure. What we do is we um, look at longevity of employment. Are they, is the client somebody who's had five jobs in the last two years? It doesn't mean that they're not lendable but it means that there's other documentation and things that we have to strengthen that corner of the triangle. And then we also look at whether or not the client um, is a wage earner or self-employed. If somebody is self-employed or receiving commission or bonus 
or overtime income. They have to be in their current job for two years mm. before we can use any of that income. And then we average, average it over two years. Okay. So on the credit side, of course, everybody wants to know what is the magical score mm -hmm. that they have to have to get a mortgage. And your answer to that is? There is not a magical score. Go back to the triangle. If we've got, let's say, a 400 credit score, but we have assets that somebody can put down 50% on a property, then we're strengthening the points of the triangle. So there's not a magic score. It all depends on the product mm -hmm. and the other two points of that triangle. So what kind of products are you talking about? Because I know that there's different types of loans, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. So and each, each product has more... Um, Specific characteristics. Right, of, yes. of, a, of a score requirement. Um, and I know for things like down payment assistance, they may need a certain mm -hmm. score, but for VA or FHA or conventional, all these things are different. Yes. All right. So now on the asset side, what do you mean by assets? Um, assets are anything that's liquid. So within seven days, how much cash can you have in your hand? And by cash, I mean that term very loosely because cash is not an acceptable asset. Hmm. So there are, there are things that have to be addressed differently if somebody has you know, $5,000 saved up in their mattress. Ah. But if somebody has personal savings or a 401k, checking account, things like that, that strengthens that point of the triangle as opposed to somebody who is getting their entire down payment as a gift from a, from a relative. We can still do that. We can still use that. But it does have to be dressed a little bit differently. So what you're saying is I can walk in here with an 800 credit score, but mm -hmm. if I've got no assets and no job, mm -hmm. I'm not going to get a loan. Just like I can walk in here with, say, a bankruptcy somewhere in the past on my credit report, but I've got strong assets and maybe great income, mm -hmm. there's still that possibility I can get that mortgage. Uh, more of a probability. More. Absolutely. We have products that one day out of a bankruptcy, nice. we can get the loan. It's going to be a larger down payment. Right. So again, we're all looking at the points of the triangle. We have to have at least two strong points to build up to an approvable client. Awesome. Well, I hope this information helps. And thank you to my friend, Lisa my friend. Wheeler, who's always been there for us here at Delta. Uh, hopefully this information has helped. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Hit the bell below because every Thursday at noon, we're going to be bringing you more information on your quest on building your credit or even being lendable. Right? Sounds good. And in the meantime, make a choice. Make a change. Delta.